Merci encore, euh, merci encore à tous. Thanks again to all OP3FT contributors who came on stage and um, participated in this uh, kind of graphic and dynamic Frogan's laboratories. But Philip, you stay with me because we're going to talk about Frogan's addresses. So our correspondent is not online tonight. So we are, he's not with us tonight. So we are going to try and be connected via Skype. I hope everything is going to be okay. Alexandre, I need your help with that. Whale Yayawi is one of the R&D directors who worked on Frogan's addresses, and he worked on the format of Frogan's addresses. He couldn't make it with us tonight. No, it's not yet tonight. It's this afternoon. He's in Ireland at the moment, in Cork, I think. I hope I'm not mistaken. Et donc on va essayer de faire ce... So we'll try and have this interview and this Skype presentation. Alors Whale, j'ai l'impression que... Whale, I think you are following us streaming. Ah, Whale, hello. Whale, hello, I can hear you. Ah, Whale. There you go. Hello, Whale. That's great. We have you full screen. Bonjour à tous. Hello, hello everyone. Hi Wayne. So I can see you as a big giant on the screen above me. So I'm turning to Alexandre. Alexandre, I'd like to show the slides as well, the slides that Wahil prepared for the presentation, for the PowerPoint presentation. Could you reduce Wahil a bit? a bit on the screen so that we can also watch his presentation. You're telling me it's impossible? Okay. Too bad. Alors, okay. On me dit. So, Alexandre said, we can't, but we can. We'll have the presentation on the other computer and we'll have to switch from one computer to the other. So is the presentation on the... Uh, appropriate computer, is it available? So Whale is on this one, and that's where I have my presentation. Perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, uh, we're live. What's important is that we are with Wahil. But, Alexandre, can you help me? Can you... Open the document that starts with Frogan's address, you know, Wahil's document. Wahil, are you still with us? Yes, I'm fine. So, Wahil, let's begin as Alexandre is preparing your presentation. Voilà, donc là, actuellement, Wahil... Uh, so, Wahil, we have your slides on screen. So, Alexandre, can you switch back and forth and I'll click to move up um, Wahil's uh, slides. Okay, be ready, Wahil, you're back on the screen. Hi, hello. So, Wahil, as I said, you are one of the designers of the current format of Frogan's address, this network name, star, that we're going to talk about. So, can you tell us what your role is within OP3FT? Yes, I am R&D project manager. I took part in designing Frogan's addresses plus other technologies like managing data transport, that's UCSR. I'm also taking part in FDSM and FSDL. Okay, absolutely. UCSR, if some people are taking notes, Unified Content Request, UCSR. It's um, technology to make uh, requests on a server in a uniform fashion. 
whale. So, you're on the slide. We have your slide. So, whale, we can't see you on the screen now, but can you remind us of what Frogan's addresses are about and why they're important within the uh, Frogan's uh, site? Well, that's uh, in inseparable from the format. Uh, of course, you, 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 we've seen the sites, but you, you need to have an address to access these sites. So they're designed to be simple, to be secure, to work at international level, whatever your language, whatever your country. And these Frogan's addresses, well, we know that all these uh, software layers on the internet, they all have a specific format, uh, software, and their own addresses. In On the web, it's URLs in email, it's the email address with elements identifying them, like an, an email address, you recognize it because it has an arrow base. Well, here we have the staff uh, Frogan's addresses. Okay, thank you very much, Wahil. So let's look, look so we have the pattern of Frogan's addresses. So it's a chain of characters which are very easy to uh, recognize, separated with the asterisk character. So people can't see you, but we see your slide on the screen. Okay. So what you see first, that is very simple. One of the objective of the Frogan's technology. Just two layers, two levels. Network name, site name, and in between you have the asterisk that separates them. And that's all. You don't need to add technical parts like in URLs where you have the question marks and all the different parameters. So it's very easy to read, very easy to describe. You have the asterisk in the, mi in the middle, which is the symbol that characterizes Frogan's sites, and it's only used by Frogan's addresses. The benefit is that it's uh, symmetrical. So you can use it when you use right to left or left to right or even top, bottom or bottom up. And it's present on all keyboards, whatever the language. You can be certain you'll find the asterisks. So you said it was uh, practical. Um, what's interesting is the bilaterality. It doesn't change the address. What do you mean exactly when you say international address? Well, Frogan's addresses are based on Unicode. Uh, so th the rules that apply are the same. You can write. It's compatible with more than 179 languages, including, uh, you know, very common languages. We have a, a database, uh, database which uh, is um, used by Unicode, and uh, that's what we've used. And we've divided these languages uh, into 10 categories. Now, what are linguistic categories? I'll, I'll just give you a few. Latin, for example. So all addresses, you know, using the, uh, the Latin um, characters, that's French, English, and so on. Then we have Greek. Um, we have Arabic as well. Sometimes there's just one language. Greek would be one example. I don't know if we have the list. If you could display the list of uh, linguistic categories. Uh, well, we did see them earlier because earlier on we looked uh, we looked at a Frogan's site with the ten public uh, Frogan's public networks and um, these are the ten. Uh, language um, categories or linguistic categories. There's one network for each. Please, go ahead. So, once again, 
we are using Unicode for each letter. An icon tells us uh, if it's right to left or left to right or both. So this is what we use to uh, manage bi-directional addresses. And then you can't just give access to all characters, but you want to avoid confusion. It could be very dangerous. Um, we have Latin, but then there is Cyrillic. And there are a lot of characters that are quite similar or that are graphically similar. So therefore, you need rules to avoid any confusion. So you don't want different scripts to be mixed. So the numbers we use in the uh, Latin alphabet are, are numbers that are used around the world. For example, in Chinese, simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese texts. Et donc on permet effectivement de les utiliser un peu partout. Mais on évite quand même beaucoup de confusion et puis on utilise. So it is important to avoid that confusion. And then there is the question. There is a problem of convergence. An address can be changed, can be transformed to give it a form of convergence. And if, if addresses look different, it can make them convergent. So they look convergent, meaning more or less the same. Once again, maybe we can have a few examples later. Well, I'm, while I'm actually displaying the slide that you are describing, and there are some examples on the slide. Um, for example, it's quite easy to, uh, you know, mix up um, an uppercase I with a, a one and a lowercase L. Then, another example is potential confusion between different uh, writing systems, uh, for example, uh, Latin and Cyrillic. As you can see, the Latin P is one letter in the Cyrillic alphabet, which I don't know, I apologize, but uh, the capital K looks a, a lot, again, like a letter in the uh, Cyrillic alphabet. And the same thing is true for the capital C. And then last but not least, Dans deux systèmes d'écriture différentes, on peut avoir des. With different, with two different writing systems, there can be characters that have nothing in common, visually speaking, but that in terms of meaning, and I, I'm not an expert, but that in terms of meaning could be, uh, could be misleading. So again, characters that don't look alike, but that mean more or less the same thing. Right. Let me add one thing to that. Frogan's addresses are two things. There are con there's convergence forms and reference forms. The form of reference is a bit more basic. It's the specification, which we call EFAP. It's the International Progress Frogan's Address Pattern, IFAP. For example, that's how we deal with capitals or um, to uppercase or lowercase. And then there is the form of convergence, which is defined within this, the Thacker specification. So that's fragrance, address, composition rules, F-A-C-R. So the form of convergence deals with risks of confusion between different languages, different alphabets, for example. So the FACRs are a bit more, uh, or, or con forms of con convergence are a bit more complex. For example, Cyrillic and Latin. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, while we had a little bit of an echo, um, let's come back to something a bit more trivial and yes, fundamental. We uh, earlier on we took a look at some uh, fragrance addresses. Uh, where are we going to see these uh, formats? Where are we going to see these uh, fragrance addresses? Well, everywhere, regardless of the context. Ça peut être sur une affiche, par exemple, sur on. Uh, it could be in written form, paper, an email, a poster, a flyer, in a player. 
taper euh, directement dans Frogans Player. You can type it directly into uh, the Frogans Player. Could be in a code as well. For example, to go from a Frogans site site to another, you can. The FSDL code is going to carry the Frogans address. So the Frogans site could appear somewhere as a, in a contextual menu as a piece of information, and the button is the link. And um, you want to, to access uh, programs from other layers, emails, um, a website, possibly your operating system, using uh, shortcuts, just like you have uh, desktop shortcuts. So to do this, we have uh, we have a small document which is called Leap to Fragrance, which uh, has yet to be published. But Leap to Fragrance, uh, by clicking on Leap to Fragrance, you can uh, access a Fragrance site. So Fragrance site, uh, a Fragrance player would be called with the address to be opened. OK, well, very good. Thank you, Wael. I think we have uh, now have a better understanding of uh, um, what we can do with an address. These are expressive addresses. They can be read. Uh, very easily, they, be, they can be communicated uh, quite easily. Let's now take a, um, analyze things from a more technical standpoint. How do they, how do these programs addresses work? Well, first of all, uh, what's important is resolution of addresses. It, uh, an address is resolved, uh, but there's more. Frogan's address can provide information about the content of a Frogan's site. So before opening this site, for example, you know what kind of content you will find. Uh, I think this is on the next slide. Well, I have a file, which uh, a lookup file, which we can display and describe together. It's a little technical, but. Um, C'est important de, de voir ce qui circule en fait au moment où vous demandez. But I think it would be interesting to see what happens exactly when you're asking to open a Frogan site on your screen. So Wael, you want to say a few words about the lookup? Sure. So rest assured, users won't see this file normally. All you need to do is click a button and to say that you want to go to a site. And Frogan's player will then make the request and receive the, the file. Um, now, to get that lookup file, there are other files that are exchanged. I, I won't go into that because that's not the subject today. But what, what actually allows you to access the FSDL file, it's the lookup file. So here it is. We've now displayed this lookup file. Um, please, go ahead. Give us some uh, insights. We're using uh, Genie um, the G publishing tool, we, so I have lines. The lines are numbered, so just tell me where to go if there's anything special you'd like to share. So I took a, I took a lookup randomly. Uh, this is an actual lookup document. Don't ask me how I did it. I asked a technician to do this, and I actually took the one from a site which will be uh, shown later during the uh, Frogrance Awards. So it's uh, Frogrance Star Open. Okay. So the first thing you see here is that this is XML. It looks like other languages. We're using, uh, you know, a language which is XML. XML is a standard language. It's known uh, quite well. It's quite widespread. And um, it's better than binary formats that are not read. And in terms of performance, this is more than what we need. Um, so XML. Um, UTF-8. So we have the Frograns uh, FNSL version, uh, 4.0. That's pretty clear. And uh, then we have EDSM Protect. So that's not exactly the FSDL. UDSM is what's used to sign documents. We're talking about address resolution, therefore, for security purposes, uh, and, and all, um, we talked about simplicity, but also security. You, you want to make sure that the uh, address resolution document has been an, emitted by a, a legitimate uh, recognized source, in this case, the FCR operator. And UDSM Protect, as the name shows, is, uh, is, it, is a markup that contains another markup. 
leur signer cette balise. Donc il y a la signature en dessous. So, right below you have the signature. If you scroll down, all the way down. Yes, I'm. It says UDSM signature. Right. Sorry, um, my screen is a bit behind yours. Donc on voit la fin aussi la balise. So, so you have UDSM, and right before the signature, what, it, what, what this shows is that the record we're about to examine has been signed. The signature is, signature is at the bottom, which means that uh, Frogan's player can verify it, which is reassuring. So you will need a key to access this, but that's a detail. Uh, we can imagine that it's been obtained by Frogan's player, so everything's been verified. And what do we have in the record? Are you back on top of the screen? Yes, I am. Right, I've just been told you're 10, 10 seconds behind me. So, the record type we have, we can see that it's a fragrance address lookup. We have a name. So that's a bit uh, freaky. It looks a bit freaky. It's a bunch of numbers, but that's the, that's the number of files you've opened. So, this name has several functions. First of all, C'est pas très lisible parce que c'est un encodage ASCII. Donc c'est un ASCII encoding. It's a bit, it's a little bit like Base 64. Une chaîne qui pourrait être impossible à afficher. Enfin, c'est de s'assurer que ce qui est là peut être affiché en ASCII. So it's it's an ASCII ASCII display because these characters, I guess, could be Arabic or Chinese characters. And we want ASCII, an ASCII display. So therefore, there is this transformation which occurred. It's very simple, but it gives this long um, entry. So it's fragrance.lookup.open.fnsl. Okay, so it's an ASCII transcription of the uh, fragrance address. Is that correct? That's exactly it. And, um, so the Unicode, if you transcribe from ASCII to ASCII, it keeps the same, it keeps the original characters. We decided not to do that. We have a simpler system in a sense. And uh, the fragrance, which is in Latin, is in, 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 in Latin and in ASCII is transformed like this. Now, what is also interesting is um, that what's transcribed into uh, ASCII is the forms of, of reference. So, Frogren's open in this case, Frogren's open is the form of reference. But if we had used uh, capitals, for example, uh, it, could, it could have been open with a capital O, and the form of reference uh, would still be lowercase. And um, this eliminates some variations, useless variations or potentially confusing variations. And with this, we make sure that the name that is here, uh, when you're try trying to resolve an address, when you type fragrance star open with a capital O, or in certain languages you add characters that change the display but, but, it, but it's still the same address well with, well with the form of reference you still get the same file with the same uh, file name I hope this is making sense says Wael um, so it is a name that identifies this address. Okay, Wail, I don't mean to rush you, but uh, I've just been told that we are running out of time. So then we have the validity of the document you have with an expiration date, which has to be entered, obviously. And then we have Frogren's um, address lookup. We have the preferred form Frogren's address. So this is the preferred uh, form as it, the name shows. So instead of putting capitals, the publisher decided to keep it like this and says, I want the address to be displayed, displayed like this, uh, low caps. Then we have the intended audience. So you could indicate an age, for example. You could, for example, decide that it's suitable for all. You could also decide that a fragrance site uh, you know, has adult content and therefore is limited to certain people only. And in that case, underage uh, people would be protected. Then we have uh, the location, um, 
countries, it's all. So this site, uh, you could decide, is only for certain countries. Um, so if you're trying to communicate, if you're trying to communicate about uh, trademarks, trademarks that apply in some countries but not in all countries, you could give that information. You can say, well, this Frogan site has been created for this country. Well, that is very interesting, Whale. So that's this is actually something that is managed out of the uh, the address. So if you register a site, qu'on peut apporter déjà des éléments sur le contenu du site. We provide information at the address level about the content of the site without having to uh, display the FSDL document and. Uh, so Frogan's player knows that it's adult content or prohibited content in certain countries and not in others. That's quite um, new. Um, that's not something we've seen so far, right? Yes, absolutely. And this is something that's, of course, interesting for Frogan's player. But also, if you're a site publisher, um, if you're legally responsible for a site, you could show that you've done things in good faith. You could, say, okay, you could say, okay, I've used such or such brand, but I did it only in some countries. And in that country, the brand is a, is a common name. So it's not, uh, I'm not infringing. Um, and I say it was only for this country. Um, and I was quite clear about this. Then we have uh, a, an indexing authorization indicator. Right. So this is uh, how you could create a, a search engine for Frogan's sites. So you're, this is where you decide to be listed or not, your sites to be, risk, to, to be listed. Then we have... Um, Frogan's site online, yes, so it is online, and there, there you have to say where. So then we have the Frogan's site root directory, so all the site files, the FSDL files, as well as images and other files in the future are in one directory. And of course, here we're learning where the directory is. So we have the UCSR-path so this is what's used to manage the network, to collect content on the network. Do we have time to go into this or not? I'm being told that the answer is no, but I still think it's quite important. USR is the technical specification of, of OP3FT for address resolution. Public, private is the network. Is it a public or is it a, is it a, a, a Frogos network or a dedicated network? I think we need to talk a little bit about the domain name uh, markup. It doesn't say um, IP or anything. It, sa it says domain name. And what do we have after? What does that uh, markup contain? Oui, well, first of all, let me say that about the US UCSR. When we have a UCSR, we put a URL as a new internet layer. We are, you know, thinking in, in more general terms. And HTTP URLs are very useful, uh, they work well, but it's one system amongst others. And uh, in the IP, DNS, TCP, HTTP network, we're saying that this path is going to work on internet with DNS to solve the domain names with TCP for transportation and with HTTP, which is the content recovery protocol. Um, location means it's public, it's not. It's a public network, it's not on a private network. Domain name. So, wait a minute. Location is, means it's not intranet, it's internet. It, because intranet that star is still being developed it's not ready for registering okay so the domain name then we have the port that's a thing to tcp and the directory and with all that information you can rebuild the url and um, 
à une de ces technologies qu'on a. We have different, we've mentioned different technologies in the network, IP, DNS, TCP, HTTP, and, but the programs player at the end can reconstruct uh, the, play, uh, the URL. And because it is uh, public, it's going to go use that uh, uh, URL. But if we put private, well, then Frogon's player would have verified uh, to make sure that we're in, on intranet and not internet, intranet. And then it, it would have decided to go get, get, it, um, get it where it is. So much for UCSR, and hopefully we will have a chance to discuss uh, USR further in a, a future reference. Absolutely. So this document was made available thanks to the, to the information provided by um, the FCR account administrator. So this do document is public. I don't know exactly how to intercept it, but I think it would be uh, quite a simple thing to do. And it's interesting that we have this UCSR which is working with domain names to identify servers. But in the future, we're not excluding, we're not ruling any, out any other technologies, in which case we would have to develop another UCSR network. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Oil, but I think that you can define several UCSR paths for the same site. Is that correct? Yes. I. I'm not sure this is yet up and running, but um, I think that that's more or less the idea. Different paths to, uh, you know, ensure redundancy. If one of the servants servers is out, you can get the backup from another one. Well, IPv6, IPv4, I guess. If one is unavailable, you have a backup with the other one. And again, I don't can't go into the detail of this because I don't know it. Let me just wrap up talking about the lookup. There is information about the FSDL document, document and the program slide we are going to fetch is uh, version 3.2 of the FSDL, which is used. It's coded in UTF-8, Unicode, which can contain international text. Uh, and we have the name of the document, the FSDL document, which is uh, here. And this uh, closes the lookup, closes the record. You talked while about electro the electronic signature. So as we're testing, um, so far the FCR operator is not signing its lookups because we, we consider that we're still developing the solution. And. Um, Security is évidemment très importante, mais elle security is uh, very important, especially the general uh, public. Uh, and I will talk about this again regarding the electronic signature. Uh, rest assured, there are no real difficulties. Uh, we will have it very, uh, very soon. Okay, well, let me take you back to um, the slide. Alors, on a parlé du motif. So we talked about motives, we talked uh, about the fact addresses are now resolved on internet. This is a bit complicated, I'm struggling here with two mice. Okay. So the third thing we need to talk about is the address registration system. We've briefly mentioned it, but uh, let's take a few more minutes. Um, I know we're going to be a bit later, but that's fine. So I'm on slide seven, the program's address registration system. Right. So all the information we've seen, and including the uh, registration of uh, the registration is information that is chosen from the uh, the, the, the publisher. The publisher decides what type what what type of content uh, needs to be published. He does this at the at the time of uh, registration. You can of course change the parameters of your address later. So you make all the, you, you publish all that information through your FCR um, account. 
registrar dans le milieu des noms de domaine. Which is uh, the equivalent of the registrar in domain name. So it's the person you need to talk to if you want to register your domain. And there are quite a few. There are quite a few out there. Qu'on liste ici, enfin l'opérateur du FCA les. Some are listing here. Sur son site web, donc vous pouvez les contacter si vous voulez. So you can contact these people if you're interested in registering contact program sites. Certains administrateurs de comptes. Some FCR um, account managers managers are here and will tell us about their business. So all fragments addresses while are registered in a single database, right? And the FCR operator then does the internet resolution. Is that correct? Yes, it manages the single database where all information on Frogan sites uh, can be found and then produces that information that's going to be used by Frogan's player to resolve addresses. So, again, uh, while I encourage you to watch the, the video of FTC 6, we did a, a system test and infrastructure test. This was um, the conditions were more or less good. Um, I made a confusion between um, time. It was a bit complicated, but um, I'm, I, I now owe you the truth. What did the FCR operator do during this last conference? We talked to one of the FNS servers. Uh, of the FCR server, one of the five that are currently deployed around the globe. And this this server is the one, uh, it's, it's one of the two servers that are based in the US, New York to be uh, specific, I think. <laughs> and then we took another server in Paris and we pushed, uh, 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 we submitted a high number of queries. It's a, a little bit like typing uh, uh, the same um, Frogan site address several, at the same time. And then we, we looked at what one of the five servers currently deployed servers um, would uh, react, would respond. And the test, the result of the test is, I forgot the number, but one FNS server connected to one fiber. Now, you will remember that one server could be connected to five fibers. With one fiber and one data center, it could process more than 30,000 uh, queries per second. That's what the FCR operator asked me to tell you. So just do the math. If you multiply that by, f by five servers, five fibers, five data centers, and then you multiply seconds by years, we're talking about huge capacity, a very large technical infrastructure. Um, to manage queries, uh, you know, of this worldwide technology. Sorry, Wahil, I wanted to make this very clear about the technical architecture of the FCR operator. We have uh, five servers, five uh, cables, and there is a growth potential by a factor of five each time. So, and I stop here because I'm going to say another stupid thing. Sorry, while I've lost everyone. So the figure that you need to remember is 30,000 requests per second. This is where FACR applies, by the way. If I want to register an address, that's very similar to another one. FACR is a filter for the uh, registering of addresses. We're not saying it's good, it's perfect to block any configuration. If FACR is not enough, then there are other things that can apply. For instance, we've seen uh, dispute resolution systems if the address that you register is very similar to the one of, to the to, to the name of a brand then there is an arbitration system in place to re-establish the rights of the brand uh, uh, name holder and FLCR uh, 
takes into account the language category that you're targeting. If you think you want to register a character string, which is in Latin, it's not going to be the same thing as if you said, I want to have this in Chinese. So, different procedures are involved. You authorize if that was placing a limit on the type of, on the characters that could be used, we impose another restriction by using just characters that we consider are very much used and absolutely necessary to write in existing languages. So, of course, uh, it can be modified, and some people can tell us, OK, you forgot this very important letter character in our own language, and it will be added. Um, then we take convergence into account. We use some kind of simplification and then reduction to bring different addresses to one single same address and then detect a potential confusion. And then there are other specific rules that uh, prevent using such and such character after another one because we know it's going to produce some level of confusion. So it's a whole, whole set of filters. But fact, FACR takes languages into account. It takes uh, linguistic categories into account, whereas IFAP does not take Merci. the languages into account. It's just characters. OK, so that's the end of our presentation. Uh, I've placed on the screen the um, public Frogan networks. So that can start with Frogans written in different languages and writing systems. This is something we've talked about. In one minute, can you tell us about the dedicated Frogan networks? Because you don't need to have all your addresses started by Frogan's star. You can talk to your FCR administrator and ask them to register your own Frogan's network. Yes, you can create your own universe within uh, Frogan's addresses, so you take control over the totality of the address, so you choose your network name amongst what's uh, authorized and if it's not in conflict with what already exists. So you have hand over the registering of addresses within this network. You can also choose customization items like the display color in Frogan's player. As you choose and create your network, you're going to create some level of consistency in your universe, and you can decide that your network is going to be dedicated to tourism or that it's going to be dedicated to such and such a sport and make sure that only addresses related to this topic are going to be registered. You can also establish a social uh, network. You also have the collective session that Damien was talking about. So that's the idea that when a web surfer goes to one of your sites on your network, you have information that it's the same user through uh, the different sites, so you can customize his or her experience. And we also wanted to say that the holder of a dedicated Frogan's network is the right holder for all Frogan addresses registered, so that's um, the uh, controller of this dedicated network, and he's responsible for verifying what's registered. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Wael. It was very instructive. It was slightly technical indeed, but it was good. It was perfect. It was online. It worked. We were on Skype, and it worked. That's perfect. So Frogan's addresses, I'm trying to uh, recap. It's a string of characters that you can recognize very easily thanks to the star, so network name, star, site name. These are the identifiers of your Frogan sites which are resolved on the internet during resolution. FNSL, which is an OP3FT 
technology allows during resolution it embarks information on the site, its location, obviously, but also many other elements. And these addresses are unique and registered within a unique registrar and they are uh, managed by a unique registrar administrator, which has servers everywhere in the world, five servers at the moment in three continents. and. They can resolve a sufficient number of requests per second, per day, per hour to support a global resolution system. Thanks a lot, Wahil.